3 Blue, 1 Brown, run by Grant Sanderson. Grant makes excellent videos about math and mathy aspects of other topics, so I'm letting him take over my channel for today. Grant, take it away. A week ago, I put out a tweet showing a peculiar place where an ellipse arises. But what I didn't mention is that this arbitrary seeming construction is actually highly relevant to a once lost lecture by Richard Feynman on why planets orbit in ellipses. The construction itself starts by drawing a circle and then choosing some point within that circle that's not at its center, what I'll call an eccentric point, and then draw a whole bunch of lines from this eccentric point up to the circumference somewhere, and then for each one of those lines, rotate it 90 degrees about its midpoint, and when you do that for all of the lines, an ellipse emerges in the middle. Out of context, this is a mildly pleasing curiosity, but there's a much deeper form of satisfaction on its way once you understand the full story surrounding this. Front and center of that story is Richard Feynman, who's famous in a number of dimensions. To scientists, he's a giant of 20th century physics, winner of the Nobel Prize for his foundational insights in quantum electrodynamics, among many other things. To the public, he's a refreshing contradiction to the stereotypes about physicists, a safe-cracking, bongo-playing, mildly philanderous nonconformist whose heavily Brooklyn-accented voice you've probably heard either relaying some bit of no-nonsense pragmatic wisdom about the only sensible way to view the world, or else some wry joke told through a crooked smile. But to physics students, he was an exceptionally skillful teacher, both for his charisma and his uncanny ability to make complicated topics feel natural and approachable. Many of the lectures he gave to a Caltech freshman course are immortalized in the now famous Feynman Lectures, whose three volumes you can find for free online. But not all of the lectures he gave made it into this collection. One in particular, a guest lecture given on March 13, 1964, entitled The Motion of Planets Around the Sun, survived only as an unpublished partial transcript with a smattering of notes buried in the office of one of Feynman's colleagues until it was eventually dug up by Caltech archivist Judith Goodstein. Despite the absence of some crucial blackboard drawings to follow what Feynman was actually saying, her husband, David, eventually reconstructed the argument of the lecture, which the two of them published in a book titled Feynman's Lost Lecture, conveying both the lecture itself and the surrounding story in a really beautiful way. Here, what I'd like to do is give a more animated and more simplified retelling of the argument that Feynman was presenting. The lecture itself is about why planets, and other astronomical objects, orbit the Sun in ellipses. It ultimately has to do with the inverse square law, the fact that the gravitational force pulling an object towards the sun is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between that object and the sun. But why? How exactly does that law give rise to an ellipse of all shapes? Of course, the gravitational attractions between different planets and moons and comets and all of that means that no orbit is a perfect ellipse, but come on, to a very good approximation, this is the shape of an orbit. You could solve this analytically, setting up the appropriate differential equation and seeing the formula for an ellipse pop out, but Feynman's goal with this lecture was to do something special and to not rely on any heavy mathematical machinery. In fact, let's listen to him articulate his own goal. I am going to give what I will call an elementary demonstration. By elementary does not mean easy to understand. <laughs> elementary means that nothing, very little, is required to know ahead of time in order to understand it, except to have an infinite amount of intelligence. <laughs> the, there may be a large number of steps that are very hard to follow, but each step does not require already knowing calculus, already knowing Fourier transforms, and so on. Yeah, that's all. Just a little infinite intelligence. I think you're up to that, don't you? I've done what I can to simplify things down further from his original lecture, but that's not to say that a good deal of focus won't still be required. First things first, we need some definition of an ellipse, otherwise there's just no hope of proving that that's the shape of an orbit. Some of you might be familiar with the classic way of constructing an ellipse using two thumbtacks and a piece of string. Use the thumbtacks to fix the ends of a small string in place, and then pull that string taut with a pencil, and try to trace out a curve while keeping that string taut. It's similar to how you might use a single thumbtack to construct a circle, where the fixed length of the string guarantees that every point you trace out is a constant distance from the thumbtack. But in this case, with two thumbtacks, what property are you guaranteeing about each point that you trace out? Well, at every point, the sum of the distances from that point to each of the two thumbtacks will be the full length of the string, right? 